After an offseason limited by some plantar fasciitis, Joel Embiid has been playing himself back into shape, and oh my goodness did he have a game against Utah, flirting with a 60-point quadruple double. JoJo's video game stat line will draw most of the attention, but this game epitomized just how diverse and futuristic his scoring arsenal is. We know he has a low post game. At 7 feet and nearly 300 pounds, he still has incredible touch and agility with his back to the basket. And Utah's big men in this game were way too slender to keep him off his spots and disrupt him on shot attempts. But Embiid also plays like a 300 pound wing. Philly's looking for Tyrese Maxey coming off a screen here for a handoff, but JoJo realizes he has space to attack, just crosses back to the middle, and it's an easy little pull up. This is a really common dribble handoff for big men around the league, but most aren't peeling it back to get into their own offense from the mid range. This time he's down on the baseline, where bigs tend to hang out these days, only he's the one receiving a screen so he can curl up to the elbow where he's so dangerous a second defender jumps him and that opens up an easy layup pass. Historically, these kinds of actions are mostly run for wings or smaller players, but Embiid plays a lot like a wing, catching outside the arc in a triple threat position with the floor cleared out in isolation, then driving by his man and slithering in for two. Here he is in semi-transition, spotting up behind the three-point line, and instead of waiting for the closeout before dribbling, he goes on the catch, which sends Mike Conley flying by him, and then it's those balletic Euro steps to slalom around a defender in the paint and scoop it in for two. That, that's, that's just ridiculous. And, and then on the very next trip, Embiid is at the top again, goes to walk into a three, and spots a little breakdown on the back line and zips it back door for a dunk. And finally, less than a minute later, he spots up behind the three-point line for a third time, just to remind everyone that he can drill threes. A perimeter game is one thing, but he's also kind of like a wing in transition. Here he is catching it on the move 25 feet away with three defenders converging, and he's somehow able to dribble into that traffic and get to the basket for free throws. Here's another one in transition where he's flying down the court, catches it in a similar spot, and he can quickly change direction despite his size, and this one's a little no-look kick out for a wide open three. And even in early offense, he's a similar threat. He catches it with the floor space, throws a hesitation dribble at the free throw line, then gets left only to pirouette back with the beautiful footwork and scoop. And this is very much like what Giannis Antetokounmpo does when he has a runway and can kind of just slalom his way around different defenders. If you don't properly build a wall to take away his angles, he's going to score and then set up teammates once you come over and help. Embiid is obviously a different athlete than Giannis, but one thing he does have coming from this position is that little hang dribble into the pull-up that is so effective around the free throw line. On this one, he even starts in the backcourt like Giannis, and Mike Conley is over to form a two-man wall, but there's no help from the other side, so Embiid gets left, and then he can just use his power to grind his way all the way in for two. What's so unique about this is that he uses his skill and agility on the perimeter, and then unlike most wings, as he slows down and the defense converges at the basket, he uses that shack size and strength to take over and finish. This lets him set up around the elbow or top of the key like this, and then he can turn and face, and all of a sudden he's a giant guard out there. Setting up in this part of the floor was popular in the 90s and mid 2000s, and at times he just looks like an oversized Kobe Bryant flowing into pull-up jumpers to his right. Of course, he can go in the other direction, this time floating behind the three-point line in the final minute of the game to put it on the floor going left, and as the help comes over, Embiid can stop short for a little step back, and he has amazing touch in this area. This is why Philly runs so much isolation offense for him in the mid-post area. He can catch it as a threat to face up and use that high-percentage mid-range jumper, or he can catch it in this area, turn and use his quickness to get by the defender. And again, once he turns the corner here, he can use his strength to shield his man and go up and finish at the rim. 
I also love how he weaponizes the up fake. This is against Jakob Pertl, and he hits him once, and then he hits him twice, and then gets into a spin move with the beautiful footwork and the touch from the free throw line. That, that is basically Jordan-esque. And then he'll use the up fake as a roll man too, here coming downhill, and then faking that free throw line jumper as a way to draw free throws. Here's two more of his 59 against Utah. This time it's a smaller, quicker Rudy Gay on him. And look what that up fake does. It completely throws Rudy off his feet. And Bede can then get left for some space and another beautiful mid-ranger. And when you're this dangerous as a scorer, the up fake can mesmerize multiple defenders. That opens up a passing window and it's a beautiful dime for a bucket. Embiid's passing has improved a little over the years. If you double him recklessly, he will find the easy layup and make you pay, although he's still a reactionary passer and doesn't hit everything. On this play, he has it at the top, and a teammate pops wide open for a layup, but that's okay because he just directs traffic, moves some people around, and then drives into that open space on the right. And so despite multiple defenders looking at him, Utah actually doesn't really take away his driving lanes and he powers it in at the bucket for two more. There were two passing sequences in this game I absolutely loved. The first is Embiid going to work in his office at the end of the clock. And as he spins to set up this move, he spots Mike Conley coming over to help. He knows someone's now going to be open. And as he spins back, scans the floor for open teammates, swings it to Maxi at the end of the clock, and that was a huge three in a very close game. The other one is also from his office in the middle of the floor, and this time he feels a help defender cheating over at the elbow, so he tries to catch him off guard early by swinging it to a teammate, and then he immediately goes back to catch this pass. You can see there's an open layup under the hoop, but that doesn't matter because this boomeranging action, swinging it to one side and then immediately attacking back to the other, shifts the entire Jazz defense out of the way, giving Embiid another driving lane to the right, this time he takes the hoop and the harm, and it's a three-point play. Just an incredible performance from Embiid, where he scored 26 of his 59 points in the fourth quarter on 7-for-8 shooting, and it wasn't just all on offense in this game for Embiid. I mentioned the plantar fasciitis at the beginning that has limited his conditioning early in the season, and there are some plays where you can see how hard it is for him to labor around the court. After sprinting up the floor on this play, it takes him about six seconds to get back, but he really ramped up the defensive energy in the fourth quarter of this game, racking up five of his seven blocks in the fourth, and you could see the full experience of Embiid, the entire process, if you will, coming together late in this game as he exerted effort on both ends, blocking shots, closing out against players, sitting down in drop coverage and disrupting drivers as they came into the paint over and over and over again to eke out a victory in just an absolutely incredible historical performance from one of the game's most unique and best players, Joel Embiid. For additional content, head on over to patreon.com slash thinking basketball. We've got a ton of extras, a live Q&A, a discussion community, and much more. Hope you enjoyed this one. As always, hope you're enjoying the early 2023 NBA season. And of course, wherever you are watching from, I hope you're having a great day.